is this one of the cleanest prints I've seen in a long time. I sculpted this in a virtual reality app called Kodan, but that's not the most mind-blowing thing about this beautiful print. The thing is, this was printed on a $185 printer. What? 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 Guys, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Beautiful 3D prints are finally affordable. It's so great. I mean, this is amazing. This is what I've been waiting for. So this came off of Creality 3D's Ender 3 printer, which is an under $200 printer that just produces stunning prints. And today I'm gonna to be talking about this printer, but I'm also gonna be talking about several other printers that are also fantastic. Some of the best printers you can buy right now. So if you're looking to buy a printer, you definitely wanna watch this video because it's a mega review. Cool. That's right, today I'm reviewing several printers in one video, and I promise it's not because I'm lazy, but rather because as someone who might be interested in buying a 3D printer, I think it's most helpful to compare these printers head to head, because as you'll see, they're all very similar. If you've been following popular 3D printers this year, you may notice that a lot of them look almost exactly the same. They've got the same rectangular frame and a rectangular base with a moving bed and, well, basically they're all based on Creality 3D's CR10, which was the hot printer of last year. And it looks like this year, the Ender 3 may be the new hot printer, another Creality 3D machine. The thing is, there are so many printers being released constantly so the market really gets to decide which ones are going to be the winners. And it looks like this model of printer, this CR10 style frame, is the winner in terms of being able to make a very accurate printer at the lowest cost. So now we're left with a bunch of different brands making a lot of very similar printers. And the question is, which one should you get? It begs a pretty interesting question, and I'm going to be touching on a lot of different things during this mega review, but this is one that I really want to hear from you guys about. One of the root causes for all these similar printers is that most of these machines are manufactured in China, where intellectual property laws aren't necessarily enforced nearly at all. So one company makes a great printer, and other companies will figure out how to make it themselves and try to sell it at a cheaper price or add some kind of small feature that makes it more desirable. The TiVo Tornado was one of the first CR10 clones and I reviewed it and I noted some small improvements like a quicker heating build plate and some metal parts that were plastic on the CR10, but Creality 3D is actually making some very interesting moves. It's responding to the pressure of the community and doing some things that are not so common in China. The Ender 3 is actually the first certified open source printer coming out of China, and that's huge. They also released source data for the CR10S after this big GPL fiasco that was happening a couple months ago. So that's really cool, and I think we have to appreciate that as a community. It makes you wonder if you should be supporting these CR10 clones when Creality is actually taking an effort to be open source, and they also update their printers constantly. Of course, it's a business decision, but it's actually pretty good for us users. So that's something I definitely want to hear about from you guys. And today, I'm going to be comparing a lot of Creality 3D printers, but I'm also going to look at the AlphaWise U20, which is the gear best alternative to the CR10. And we can kind of compare those. Sorry, I've started off this mega review with a bit of a rant, but I really want to hear your thoughts about that. And uh, anyways, let's look at some prints from these printers. This is Snell, a little model that I sculpted and shared with you guys a while back. I've been using it recently as a benchmark for my prints since it's got some really tiny details. It's got some retraction tests up here with the antennas. It's a nice little model, but take a look at this. This was off of the Ender 3, straight off the build plate. It looks amazing, right? This guy came off of the original CR10, and this one came off the CR10S. CR10? CR10S. I don't know about you guys, but to me, they look pretty much identical. So I guess the first question from this mega review that a lot of you might have is, is the CR10S worth it 
over the CR10. Personally, I have two CR10s and two CR10S printers, and I've done hundreds of hours of prints on both of them. So my personal opinion is that there's not really a reason to upgrade to the CR10S. It's not that they're exactly the same. The CR10S has a filament runout sensor. It's got a power resume function. It's got two Z rods instead of one. But as far as print quality, they're pretty much both amazing printers. You can't get much better than the CR10. The additional functions aren't useless, so maybe for you it is worth it if you have your power going out pretty often or if you wanna do a lot of really long prints and you don't wanna watch for the filament to run out. But the price difference for me makes me wanna stick with the CR10. The entire time I've been using these CR10s, I've had zero big problems. They've been very low maintenance. Their quality has remained fantastic, impeccable. I have no complaints. The CR10S, one of them actually had the heated cable break and I had a similar issue on the Ender 3. It seems to be a very common problem with these Creality 3D printers, so I'm not saying they're perfect by all means, but dang, the print quality, the print quality. Anyways, we'll get to that in a bit. This is a vase that I've yet to share. It comes off of the CR10, and I mean, uh, it's as close to perfect as I could ask for. It really is. It took a lot of supports, but I managed to print this insanely intricate dragon on the CR10S. That also came out looking pretty amazing. Here's another new one for you guys, another VR sculpt. I'm really loving the VR sculpts. This is a giant chicken skull. And yeah, once again, <laughs> No complaints. This moon was printed on the CR10S as well. So you can see we can get a lot of really small details with this machine. Here's that same Snell, but printed on the AlphaWise U20 for comparison. There's a bit of stringing, but for the most part, I'd say the quality is equivalent to all the other printers. Here's a smaller version of the same Caterpillar also printed on the U20. And it also came out looking really, really clean. And this is a little twist face that I designed. We've got some Matter Hackers Clear Pro Filament and their Pro White. This half was printed on the Alpha Wise U20. This half was printed on the CR10S. And if we look at both of them, they're quite comparable. I also used the CR10S for my 3D puzzles as well as my half penny board. This one was printed in PETG, came out fantastic. I could go on and on and on, but as you can see, all the prints pretty much look the same. They're virtually perfect. So how do you know which printer to get? Here is that AlphaWise U20. As you guys saw, the print quality that I'm getting is virtually the same. However, my experience receiving and assembling this machine was not quite up to par with the Creality printers. The biggest issue I had when I received this printer was that the limiter switch on the x-axis was completely destroyed. It was broken into bits and I actually had to go find a second limiter switch and solder that onto the board and replace it myself. So that was a bit of a technical thing that I had to do and pretty annoying to get a printer and you're ready to run it and you have to get a second limiter switch. I was also missing one of the screws that holds the top of the frame to the base. So I had to steal that from the spares that came with the TiVo Tornado. The fan here was bent out of place, but I was able to just push it back. So there were a lot of little issues that I had to fix. Quality control is definitely not as good with this AlphaWise printer, but I was able to get beautiful prints eventually. So if you want to tinker and depending on your thoughts on Creality and whether you should support them, take it for what it's worth. And of course, then there's the Ender 3, the one that everyone's talking about, the one I started the video with. Honestly, I have the least experience with this printer since it's the newest one that they've sent to me, but man, this is amazing. If you're completely fresh to 3D printing, if you're in the market for a printer under $200, I will have to recommend the Ender 3. 
It's been really amazing. I mean, the print quality is equivalent to printers that I have that cost $6,000. This one was 185 bucks. It's kind of a no-brainer. Now, I know I'm praising these printers really hard, but that's not to say there aren't any problems. Pretty much every printer you're gonna buy today has a risk of having little things that you're gonna need to tinker with. That's kind of inherent in 3D printing these days, is that you're gonna learn how these machines operate and you're gonna wanna make tweaks, you're gonna wanna make changes, you're gonna wanna print some upgrades. That's how 3D printing works and the Ender 3 is no exception. One of the most annoying and very common problems with all of these Creality printers is that the heated bed cable will often go out. Not the bed itself, but just the cable connecting the heated bed to the power supply. So with the CR-10S, I had that plug that goes into the power supply from the heated bed break. And thankfully, Creality 3D is pretty responsive. They have decent customer support, and they did end up shipping me another cable, although it did take a couple months. With the Ender 3, it wasn't the plug, but just the wiring itself that went out. So I actually took that old cable from the CR-10S and soldered it in place of this Ender 3 cable. So soldering skills may be required, but you know, it's easy enough to learn. That was definitely an annoying problem though, and you hear about it a lot with the CR-10s. There's always a good shot that you'll run into something. I know Angus over at Maker's Muse had his PTF tube being a little bit too narrow, so filament wasn't feeding through it well. There's just little things like that. They can all be fixed, but they can be minor inconveniences. But for the price, it's still totally worth it. And the other great thing about these printers is because of their overwhelming popularity, the community support online is massive. There's Facebook groups, there's Reddit threads, there's YouTube videos that can help you solve just about any problem that you run into with these machines. Another difference between the Ender 3 and the other printers is that the Ender is more of a kit than the others. So the CR-10, it comes in pieces, but it's basically two pieces that you screw together. The Ender comes as separate parts, but the instructions are super clear and it's really a quick and quite fun build. In fact, if you have no experience with 3D printers, it's probably better to start with a printer that you assemble, that way you're learning about all the different parts. So I actually don't have any complaints about that. Another point about Creality being super responsive, you know, the original CR-10 was so popular and there's tons of upgrades and mods for that printer, but Creality actually ended up integrating some of those mods directly into the printer. So you've got these huge tuning knobs on the bottom for adjusting the build height. It makes it a lot easier and that's something that you used to have to print out now it comes as an injection molded part. They've got the built-in spool holder at the top. Like I said, they've added that strain relief to all these printers. It's pretty cool. All right, so we've got the CR-10, the CR-10S, both great classic quality printers. Now there's the Ender 3, slightly smaller build volume, but for the price, are you kidding me? But I just can't help but feel like I'm missing something. Something kind of big. Whoa. <laughs> this is the CR-10S upgraded 400 by 400 millimeter printer, commonly known as the S4. So unlike the CR-10 that has a 300 by 300 millimeter build plate, they added another 100 and basically kept everything else generally the same as the CR-10S. I just finished printing this half of a twist container spool and this is the biggest print I've ever done by far. Not just scale-wise, but in terms of material, I used, I think, six or seven spools of filament. This took nearly 200 hours. Let's get this thing off the build plate. Uh, it's a good thing I got these special spatulas from AMX3D, because this is a big print. So let's wedge that in there and wedge this in here. Slide around. Oh my gosh. I thought this was still stuck, but it's just really heavy. This is like really heavy. This was printed with a one millimeter nozzle. You kind of have to use large nozzles to take up the whole build plate on this CR-10 S4. Otherwise you're gonna be printing for weeks on end. But the print looks great. 
I think I'm gonna save this project for another video, so I won't explain about it too much, but just take a look at what the S4 can do. Here's another absolutely massive print off of that CR10 S4. This one was printed with that beautiful translucent blue PLA from Matter Hackers. And this one was printed with a standard nozzle, so it's a little bit flimsy. So I decided to print this thicker one, a little bit smaller, a little bit more reasonable. And this one's made with a one millimeter nozzle as well. This is printed with Filamentum's Noble Blue, really a stunning color. And this thing's actually really sturdy. I've been using this as a recycling bin in my room for a couple months and it's been holding up. Awesome. Oh, and this lamp. I printed a freaking giant lamp on the CR10 S4 as well. This is probably my second longest print. I think it was 168 hours. But uh, as you can see, the CR10 S4 works pretty much as well as the other printers. It's just really good for massive things. That said, I wouldn't necessarily get this printer unless you intend on mostly just printing large things or at least large batches of objects that take up the full build plate because at the cost of being way bigger, things take a little longer. Specifically, heating up the build plate takes a lot longer on this CR10 S4 since the heating pad underneath is the same one used on the smaller printers. In fact, out of the box, I was only able to get up to 63 degrees Celsius with that build plate. To get it any higher, you would have to do some upgrades. So I've pretty much only been printing with PLA on this S4 so far, but print quality is fantastic. It's been reliable enough to print these massive things. I've definitely used the filament runout sensor on this one quite a few times, several times on this thing alone. But yeah, get this printer if you want to print massive things. Otherwise, get the more manageable CR10S or even the Ender 3. These mega reviews are kind of wild, but as you can see, I really like these printers. I'm not the only one either. If you look at the community out there, pretty much there's a resounding positivity for Creality 3D printers now, and especially that Ender 3. It's got little problems here and there, same with all the printers, but dang, it's worth it. It's worth it. If you want to get a printer, if the price is right, you're gonna get better quality out of these printers than a lot of other printers in the same price range. All of these machines were either sent to me from Creality 3D or from Gearbest. I'll put links in the description to Gearbest. Amazon also sells some of these printers. I'll put those links if they're available. But that's it for today. If you have questions, comments, experience with these machines yourselves, any thoughts you've got, share them in the comments. Let's have a conversation. As always, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.